You're very welcome to the Keith Andrews Show with you on YouTube, Twitter and Facebook uh, every Thursday afternoon from 12.30 in the hot seat this week, I'm glad to say, is Mr Stephen Hunt. Thanks for coming in, pal. Afternoon, Keith. You weren't used to the Dublin traffic? No, straight up. Right for a little bit, yeah, quick journey, an hour and a half. and back then for Easter? Back for Easter, over and back, yeah. thing and all the time, but yeah. Girl's back, having a nice time. Girl's back, my daughter's birthday today, so I've given up Yeah, you have done an, an hour and a half of her time and the wife's time, but she never sees me anyway, as she says. <laughs> <laughs> so come here, this week we're going to chat about Champions League, uh, really good week in terms of drama, yep. probably unexpected. Your brother is going to be joining us on the line, I know you're looking forward to that. Yep, God knows what he'll say, but yeah, we'll have a we'll have a bit of banter and go with it. So how's life at the moment? A couple of your young players. That, oh, there's a nice picture actually. We're just seeing it on the screen. Myself, yourself, and Noel. So we're in the wall. Where was that? What game was that? Mm. You know, Tommy. I think that could have been Poland. No. Do you think that was Poland? Noel playing that game. We come on together. Trap was his was Noel's debut, first game as well. November two thousand and eight. That was that was um yeah it was Poland. You're right. Yeah. You're right. If lost three lost one, picture. yeah. No, lost two one three one three two. You scored a penalty. Three two. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't know Noel played in that. Game. I didn't. Yeah, come on. He fed the trap. He brought two of us on the same time. Did you both come on in that game as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah. It was I nice little. That. Nice from Mister to do the business and bring us on the same yeah. time. Um, we'll chat to you a little bit about about that later on. Um, want to chat to you a little bit about couple of you young lads you're, you're working yep. with Ryan, Ryan Delaney who's had a good couple of months at yep. Rochdale he's had a good move there he's played some big games hasn't he obviously yeah. he Spurs. how's he down? well he's obviously had a season at Cork last year where he, he toughened him up a little bit and he's got ready for how important for, was that for him? important uh, from his development I think he got a bit of a shock not that he got a bit of a shock you know what's like when you go to England it's a bit mm. different and I remember him when he I, was at Burton wasn't he? he was at Burton he was yeah. to be fair to Burton they didn't really give him a chance there and they had they were in the championship they were going with more experience at the time uh, they didn't feel he was ready for it, but Cork done him the world of good John Caulfield to be fair to him worked hard with him on his game did a bit of extra training with him and, and got him to a level where we knew he could compete in England at a certain level now and he's, he's a He's a lad that wants to go forward. He's all ears. He wants to listen. Wants to learn. And yeah, you've always uh, gone on about his attitude being yeah. being impeccable. You just know sometimes when young lads are listening to you, and whether it's going in, not. some of them are obviously not, and, and sometimes the dads are the worst case scenario. So he's doing well. Um, Paddy O'Connor at Leeds had a good week. Played the other night. Yeah, against Preston. Yep. Inexperienced back four, wasn't it? But he's a Limerick lad, isn't he? Yeah, he's a Limerick lad. It's amazing perception of someone when they play from twenty threes, and you're saying, listen. This guy's played men's football in, with Limerick. He's, he understands the winning mentality and then he's gone into the Leeds team. Now they they drew against Sunderland and, and lost the other night, but he's done really well in the two games and he's looking to, to push forward again another lad with a good attitude, so it's nice to see. Mm. So Champions League this week, yeah. we probably expected Liverpool, Man City to be the big talking point. Um, probably far from it, really. If we, yeah. st- we start with last, obviously Tuesday night, Roma, it was a game I was covering, one of the best performances I've seen this season, and I don't say that lightly. But last night, we'll start with last night, yeah. and Juventus get it back on an even keel. Looks like it's just ebbing towards extra time, yeah. possibly penalties. You could could have seen it just fizzling out even extra time had it got there. Yeah. Big decision. What, do you think it was a penalty? Oh, the, the players played for it. There's no doubt he's he's seen him come in, it, or in the corner of his eye and he's fell for it and he's gone down. Uh, one thing I say about the referee, I, I I personally thought he was too close to the action because that means everybody was on top of him straight away and the, and the whole scenario got out of hand. But it was a penalty from, it wasn't a penalty for me. And, and you, you go didn't from think it was a penalty. No, even though the hand has gone on him, if it's outside the box, he's gone down very lightly. And in that time and game and, and the situation he was in, not a penalty for me. I I've got sympathy for him. I like him as a ref, actually, Michael Oliver. Yeah. I don't know what you think. I think is there we see an image of it on on screen. I've I've got a bit of a bugbear at the moment. I think you would have been very good at this if if, if the rules had been in when you were playing. Attackers flicking their leg into a defender, them instigating contact, now seems always a foul. So it's yeah. clever on the attacker's part. Another bugbear of mine is contact doesn't always equal a foul mm. in my book yeah. because it's a contact sport. There was a little bit of contact there, but as per usual... Players going down fairly easily. I, I yeah. can really understand why he gave the penalty. There was 
Yes, I can understand why he's given it. There was a penalty given for a couple of weeks ago, I can't remember the game, but he stood on somebody's foot and the guy's gone down. Like a sack of spuds. Like a sack of spuds. Mm. You know yourself, you don't fall down for that. Yeah. You have to either. I don't mind the situation where you run across someone and mm. your legs are tangled up and you play for the penalty and you get it, but when someone's falling on your foot or someone's coming from behind you and you're already going down, yeah. I don't think it's, a, it's not great in the game. So then he gives the decision. A lot of rigmarole afterwards. Yeah. What was your take then on the reaction first and foremost from the Juventus players? Yeah. And should it have been a red card for Buffon? Hundred percent. I understand the players' reaction. Imagine if you're three oh, nil, having come back yeah. from three nil down, and then to get a, a dubious penalty decision. It's got to be clear cut <clears throat> in that situation for me to give a pen when the players have worked so hard to get back in the emotion, the abuse they would have got for losing and three nil at home. Juventus is a massive club, so you make no mistake about it. They would have got pretty much scrutinised for the last performance. Then to come back to three three all and to lose a game like that is it's terrible. Uh, my take on it is I. I I think it's just a penalty. Then after that, I think he maybe gets caught up in the whole the six, seven players around yeah. him. The most aggressive one was probably Buffon. Yeah. And that's why he issues the red card. I think if he looks back at it, you know, he certainly won't admit it publicly because mm. he's been backed by everybody now this morning. Mm. Probably common sense should have given him a yellow card. And then mm. at least then you give Buffon the chance to save the day. Yeah. But having said that, nobody was saving that penalty no it's a great penalty especially mm. with the fact that I couldn't believe I thought Shares and he should have taken a little bit longer coming on mm. players were still messing about a little bit he had to wait a good 4 or 5 minutes yeah. to take the penalty That that's proper proper pressure yeah. I give him a bit of stick especially when you see him celebrating in the way he does yeah. so I think he is a bit of a whopper <laughs> but, <laughs> but what a penalty kick yeah I, I don't think Ronaldo is just mentally strong. Strong as it gets. He's changed his game from a show pony slash trickster to a selfish goal scorer. So he's not running around, he can't run around as much, mm. but he's still in physical condition to jump high over head kicks and to get from what he did in the last game, it just shows how mentally tough he is. Mm. Phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal, but... A bit of a whopper as well. <laughs> he is a whopper, isn't he? See, that's why, that's why yeah. people go on Messi. Yeah. I, I agree. Like he's, you can't argue with his, his record and yeah. the way he's reinvented himself. He has to play as that number nine now. Yeah. He can do that for another three, four, yeah. five years probably with the condition he's in. You can <laughs> see when he takes his... I was, I was watching the game last night and with my wife and she said, what would you do if you were commentating on this game now? And he was taking his top off like that and he was walking back and he's pulling his shorts down to really let everybody know how ripped he is. And I was a bit... Oh, I don't know because you obviously have to give him the plaudits because he's ultimately he thinking that, that, he doesn't look that way by fluke no. <laughs> moving on let's go on to Roma against Barca yeah. the performance in the first leg was 4-1 mm -hmm. Barcelona two on goals from De Rossi uh, Manolos mm -hmm. really really harsh scoreline from the first line and we're just going to play a little bit of commentary from the game the other night just kind of paints the picture of, okay. of, uh, of the drama. Attention, mamma mia. Dai, Daniel. Parte de Rossi. Tiro, gol! È il gol del raddoppio, 2-0. 2-0 a mezza altezza, Danielino. A mezza altezza, Danielino. A mezza... Parte Under, ecco il cross. It was commentary there. I need to take a leaf out of his book because that was off the off the charts. It really was. But I, I cannot tell you how impressed I am with them because I've covered a lot of their, no, not a lot. Some of their group games, the last sixteen against Shakhtar, average. Shakhtar would be disappointed they didn't go through. You look at some of the personnel. They're kind of 
defensively fairly solid, a little bit pedestrian in the way they play. De Rossi playing in midfield, he's 34, I think he is now, gets around but to a level. That performance, Hundi, I swear to God, they were it was as if they were possessed. Yeah. The stadium before the game, it was like a throwback to the eighties when they were playing Liverpool with the big flags like flying around behind the goal. The yeah. the, the, the scene was set and as if the adrenaline kicked in. And we like we've been there in terms yeah. of you know when you over perform what mm-hmm. collectively everybody yeah. was on it. They were phenomenal. And you, you get the feeling, don't you, in the in the change room beforehand, yeah. the atmosphere, you know something big's coming. Mm. And then can you replicate it? Can you go and do yeah. it? Can you go mm. and produce? So for that to happen, it was twofold, obviously. Barcelona just didn't perform. Now, they didn't allow them to perform. He made some big calls. Uh, Di Francesco the Roma coach who is getting a big reputation he's brought Sassuolo into the Europa League last year got the move to, to Roma deservedly mm-hmm. so played three at the back the other night mm-hmm. big shuffle around doesn't play that so it was a yeah. bit of a gamble yeah. can cover yourself in a little bit of glory or equally you can get criticised if it goes the other way yeah. the performance levels were phenomenal like I cannot tell you how good it was yeah. and I mentioned about the own goals last week Manolos and De Rossi both of those scored this week so yeah. a bit of redemption for them. Eden Zeko, Raggy Dold, yeah. Gerard PK, and Umtiti. Umtiti, I don't, I don't know what planet he was on the other night in terms of his defence. Yeah. yeah, awareness, alarm bells going when there's an issue defensively. Yeah. He was so lacklustre, it was staggering. It can happen. Mm. Not very often, it should, <clears throat> especially for Barcelona, but in them situations with the atmosphere and everything goes with it, Roma get a goal mm. and the whole place and like from bits and pieces I've seen of it it was pure physical yeah they were throwback any time I went to any of the commentators in Sky as well they were like but Roma are just bullying them here they're Batting. kicking lumps out of them yeah. I was Charlie whatever his name on Sky Sports knew Nicholas Nicholas who loves himself anyway the best of times <laughs> <laughs> he literally was saying it's over the, over the top well, in terms pre- of the aggression, in terms of the no. aggression, no, I disagree. Yeah, I disagree. Look, I, I, I like a tackle. I you like seeing attack. Game. I like seeing yeah. any chance they got. Like Barcelona, were more worried about getting Roma players booked. Valverde on the mm. sideline was onto the fourth official. Weren't mm. like and weren't deal with it. And the way for me, mm. Barcelona deal with that is make the pitch as big as possible and, and keep the ball yeah. away from Roma. Pick off. We spoke about De Rossi. Yeah. De Rossi can't keep doing doggies. Mm because he'll blow up if yeah. the age is as simple as that but yeah. they just didn't do it and defensively Barcelona starting from the top play a narrow 4-4-2 mm-hmm. Messi and Suarez so when we think of Suarez at his best Liverpool chasing things down yeah, forget about it he's either been told to just do very little yeah. out of possession or he's now thinking I'm in the the Messi bracket where I can, mm-hmm. I can have a, a relatively free role and just play when we have the ball mm-hmm. Dangerous so, game. Very dangerous, mm. especially when you're under the cosh. You so they were defending with eight players. Yeah. You lose your fitness as well. Yeah. Sharpness. Yeah, that's his player. That's, that's, that's him. Yeah, yeah. That's why he got to where he mm. was. Iniesta to the left and Busquets in the middle with Rakitic. Mm. So you're already two down. Yeah. And you've got Iniesta and Busquets. Unbelievable players. Yeah. But getting to an age now and legs wise, energy wise. Can't get close enough. No. No. So you're defending with eight players. I've already mentioned mm. them Titi. Alba left back, shocking. Yeah. It was coming, it was coming. I was so disappointed in the lack of a reaction from Barcelona. It was as if, all right, we conceded a second, it's okay, we'll just, we won't concede again. And then it's panic stations when they when they go to tour goal down. It's getting to this time of the year, though, where players are beginning to look at the World Cup now. Mm. And Do you think that's a factor, yeah? We, we all know about it. We, to the European, I mean, even the European Championships, it's certainly, you start looking, start looking after yourself. The players will start picking up little injuries and they... Mm. And they're saying, oh, I'll have two weeks off here. and Not so much with Barcelona, you wouldn't think. Mm. And, the, and the state of the, the atmosphere in the stadium, everything goes with it, very difficult. But players do think... Valverde disappointed me, though, because he's been quite flexible with his system. You, look, you think of Barcelona down three years, it's always been a 4-3-3. Mm-hmm. That's where they've had their, their joy. This year, Coutinho wasn't eligible. He left Dembele on the bench, who's struggled for much of the season with injuries. Mm-hmm. Goes with the 4-4-2. He just didn't tweak it. Just didn't. The game's mm. not going to plan. That's why a manager is in mm. place. Yeah, that's the key to it. You're right. To be able he, to tweak it, change it, adapt. Yeah. Make the big calls. Take mm. Iniesta off. Flip it on its head. If you're under the cosh and Iniesta is your left winger, get them belly on. Mm. Tweak the system. Yeah. And one or two nil. 
you got to think right time to change Cause yeah. I can under, you can understand two lines of four mm. we'll have these two guys on the counter attack we'll sit in but if you don't get the ball back and if you don't score you're in trouble mm. it's obviously happened um, right Man City Liverpool yeah what were you expecting going into that game Man City disappointed me on the night I expected Man City to be on the front foot a bit more pace disappointed to see Aguero whether he wasn't fit or not to start the game I thought he deserved to play mm-hmm. yes great start by Man City but dream start dream start a very good performance first half mm. but second half they really disappointed me in, in their manner and, and how they conceded were you surprised with his um, the team selection in terms of Aguero company were you surprised with the system that he played okay. and three at the back Kyle Walker, I disappointed with play. Aguero not playing I think he's what's key the, to him what's, what's the story there just not 100% the perfect fit for each other by the looks of it but he understands Aguero in the Premier League scores goals mm. he understands probably that he, there was no one really to come in instead of him company I can half understand because if you're going at it high up and he's isolated I think he's vulnerable with all the injuries he's had I don't think he's as quick and as strong as he used to be it's a big statement I know and you're looking at me like what is this company you're talking about mm. but I do think it on the men, he has had a bad game the other night, mm. but has been generally good this year. In fairness, well, he's probably been the best centre half in terms of yeah. consist consistently available. That's probably been the biggest one in terms yeah. of other players have had their injury stones, and, and obviously Vincent Company's been well documented. But Laporte, that left sided area, he struggled mm. in the first leg in, in the left back area. Yeah. Mohamed Salah in that position, isolating him in one v one areas. I mean, you notice like as good as. Guardiola is tactically yeah. and setting up a team and the organisation we keep on hearing about players that have played for him mm. there's still a grey area when you play three at the back in terms of flipping from that four at the back for, yeah. for left backs for centre halves in particular that area of the pitch and Salah I thought yeah. was quality in terms of yeah well if you look at he's had how many goals did he get over two legs he got one goal and one assist mm. and that's two goals out of the five straight away that come to mind with him I would have been half tempted to play Kyle Walker on the left side of defence just to deal with him cutting inside just on his left on, and then having the pace to go with him mm. he's so quick and so low to the ground with gravity he's difficult to get near so maybe that would have been an option but I think Kyle Walker can play right side of a tree or left side of a tree he might deal with England in the summer but I just don't think they dealt with that whole area too well on the night City only had three shots on target in 180 minutes for a, and with a dodgy keeper for Liverpool and a dodgy apparently dodgy back four but well that back four is starting to look mm-hmm. a lot better isn't it yeah well it's just it's been that back four for a while now it's been a consistency in the in the selection yeah. and all the right backs just coming into it but I like I like, like him yeah I like Trent uh, Trent Alexander Arnold yeah I do yeah I think the modern fullback has to have lots of pace now and mm. he certainly does Robinson just seems to just want well, him he's getting on with his job he doesn't he's low maintenance he's, he's obviously right mentality to go there it's taken him a while to get fitted in 100% but mm. it looks like he's settled in well now and going well he? I'd like to see him now in the semi-final in a, with a real test to be fair Sterling and the boys they have playing there are a good they test do, they do look better defensively they really do and yeah. I find it weird as well I think I've mentioned this before in terms of the aftermath of Coutinho leaving we seem yeah. to have forgotten about that because their yeah. form has just kicked on and obviously yeah. Champions League wise has been Brilliant, especially against against this uh, Man City team over two legs. The team, the balance of the team looks better without Coutinho having to fit in, fit him in the extra, the Fab Four. Yeah. Then it turned into that front three, the devastating effect behind that. Defensively, the structure of the team yeah. just looks better. Yeah. Because you have to get Coutinho into that team, you obviously have to play with two holders mm. and Coutinho in front. The, the way he likes to play yeah. you've already mentioned Robertson Alexander Arnold play high and wide the three play narrow up top yeah. you look a little bit more vulnerable whereas those three energetic midfielders they do some serious yeah. work to compensate for the front three at times yeah I agree I heard Phil Thompson say oh we need a really good attacking midfielder on Sky Dunn. no you have three people in there three midfielders that are hard working technically not the greatest the front three you have can cause serious damage and will win games for you nine times out of ten. Mm. He's it's it's and do you know he's going to get a Champions League medal if they win. Okay, so you can, would you give it to him as manager? <laughs> you wouldn't I don't, give it to him as manager. No, I definitely. wouldn't. I wouldn't. But he'll be he'll be kicking himself though. Depends on how he was from September through to January, mm. where he bought into the Liverpool way again and 
only he'll know that and whether yeah. he's demanded. He did, to be fair, though, didn't he? His attitude yeah. seemed. But he did well actually when he played. So. Yeah, seemed quite good. Yeah. How, where do you see them in terms of winning it? Oh. We're obviously into the semis. They've got every chance, haven't they? From the quarterfinals, it's wide open now. Yeah. Both all four teams have had in different games in the quarters. So while well, Liverpool prefer one boat legs convincingly, I think over the two legs. So Real Madrid have Ronaldo. They have the X factor that goes with it. They have a good balance in terms of players. I think Liverpool got a great chance of winning. Mm. Who do you have as favourites? Real, Real Madrid. Madrid have to be favourites. Yeah. And you see much of Bayern? Not too much, but you know what you're going to get to a certain degree. You're going to get a real stability, real strong mentality. They'll do whatever it takes to win a game. Uh, ideally, I think Liverpool Roma would be Liverpool's best bet. I think in the semi final, mm. try and stay away from the experienced ones. Stay away from Madrid anyway, for sure. But mm. uh, Liverpool can. What's, we're going to hear now about Mick McCarthy's departure from Ipswich. Mick, I know you've called the players together and had a word with them. Um, I think it can be your last game as Ipswich Town manager. It is. Yeah, started with a win, finished with a win. And uh, you could probably see why I'm going after the reaction when I took Barry Cotter off. Uh, that's just pathetic. Mm. You know, I've, I've signed him, I've played him. He's absolutely knackered, he needs to come off. Ward, he was brilliant, by the way. So, yeah, I'm out of here. Sad, because I've loved my time here. And thank everybody for all the support. Uh, I've done my stuff. I've done my stuff and I've, I've left them in a far better shape than I found them. This is not a, a reaction to the game, it's something you've been thinking about for a while. I don't think no, you've really, no, no, really no. enjoyed it much have you, the last few weeks, have you? Not at all. No, I enjoyed the fact that I'm sort of not in control, really. The lads have been brilliant, the mm. lads have been fantastic. I've enjoyed that game today because I thought we played well, we could have won by more so in the second half. But it's another situation I'm in now. I'm caretaker manager of my own job, which is ridiculous. Mm. So. Can I put on record, Mick? Thanks. It's been an absolute honour to work with you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Well, he's a manager, you know, certainly better than me. Signed you twice, uh, Wolves and at uh, Ipswich. Yeah. I find it very, very sad. As you know, I cover championship games every week. I think the Ipswich fans are away with the fairies. I really do. I, I find it sad the way it, it's become so toxic, or mm -hmm. hasn't become. It's gone now. It's mm -hmm. it's the end of a, of a chapter in their history. Five and a half years, drastically overachieved in his first few years in terms of the budget that's available for him. Mm -hmm. What to do with that club? He should be just fe staying up in the division is probably an achievement mm -hmm. to get to, in and around playoffs. Yep. His first few seasons, okay, last season, not great. Had the opportunity going back six, eight weeks ago, you know that pivotal time of your mm -hmm. season, can you push on to the playoffs? They haven't been able to do that. Mm -hmm. I find it really, really sad what's gone on there. Yeah, they've spent three million in five and a half years, I think it was, was what it was, maybe 71 free transfers, something like, along them lines that he's signed turnover of players when you're on a small budget is very difficult. So I know the way he works from Ipswich days. Wolves is a bit different. Yeah, budget-wise yeah, was budget -wise, different, wasn't it? But he, he was successful. Mm. I think with the Ipswich fans, they, they'll only realise how good he is when he's gone. Uh, I said that on Sky a few weeks yeah. ago and I got battered. Yeah. Because it the, was the Norwich uh, Ipswich derby yeah. and it was all that kind of for Mick on in a little bit of trouble. Do you remember when his terms of a celebration? Yeah. yeah. He had a, was having a little pop. There's a the reason why Mick is successful because deep down it probably was at the Ipswich fans, I reckon. But deep down, he'll tell me to bugger off too. Mm. In certain situations, when I went to see him, on certain situations in terms of playing or whatever. Mm. But that was him. That's what made him successful. He was he's stubborn. He's good. He believes in himself. He's the boss. He seems like he believes. I always felt when I played against his teams, and he is someone that I have got a lot of respect for. Yeah. He seems like he has huge belief in his players, yeah. and he creates that kind of togetherness. And yeah. he probably. I would imagine because the fans weren't like that when you were there, were they? It hadn't turned like no, that. No, it was they were well behind us, and yeah. if anything, what's gone against us is the few derbies against Norwich, maybe against mixed His record. It hasn't been. We haven't then, managed to beat him. Yeah. Nothing. So, well, I don't think he has because we played against. Oh, him he hasn't. Boston. And that that game yeah. at Carr Road a couple of months ago would have been a massive. Would have been his first, and yeah. then they conceded very, very late on, which was, yeah. I'm sure, was a bitter pill to swallow. Yeah, I, I'm sure Mick would have wanted to go out on a win and he mm. might have been waiting for that win to come to go see you later I'm off mm. where does he go from here? Oh, he says he be. wants a job 
like literally tomorrow yeah <laughs> that, that would be, be him it'd be him you'd, there'd be a lot of chairman out there yeah. thinking safe pair of hands knows what he's doing see the passion is still in him the hunger yeah. to work hunger to achieve yeah. um, low maintenance yeah but, but in terms of what he is and managers sometimes can be asking for this and that he tell me your budget and I'll work away with it that's what he'll do he'll and he comes with obviously his loyal assistant Terry Connor who he trusts and uh, as he said himself in the interview he, he'll he be with him and mm. they'll, they'll be missed in Ipswich from the from the training ground from the staff from the pl- staff at the ground the way he is with people it's going to be a big big change at that club because yeah. I was there before Mick Mick took over just after I was there on a half season loan mm-hmm. you were obviously there was it a couple of years a couple of years yeah, yeah. there's going to be because there's been a, a relative kind of security mm-hmm. about the club in those years that Mick has been there five and a half years you do, you, you know as well as I know mm-hmm. when you get a manager now in place that is a bit of a gamble maybe mm-hmm. things can go horribly horribly wrong look mm-hmm. at Sunderland mm-hmm. Birmingham nearly went down they look like they're, they're quite yeah. safe now with Gary Monk in charge yeah. I'm with you be very very mm-hmm. careful what you wish for what you wish for and especially being mixed players as well mm-hmm. Mick likes hard working players so if you're going to bring in one or two in the new manager's eyes is very talented attacking players technical players how are they going to how are they going to fit into the whole setup? you're really going to have to look at changing the whole squad if 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 you're a manager but he probably won't do that will he Dion he won't be allowed no I don't think Marcus will do that budget wise he's very I think it's maybe 10% of his business Mm. so it's not an awful lot but still an awful lot to the Ipswich fans that go every week and and want to to achieve things and, and go on but as you say, be careful what you wish for. Mm. Right, I want to move on to one of our former clubs and Mix, obviously as well. Obviously Wolves, yep. literally back in the Premiership. What a season they have had! I think for the last, if anybody hasn't seen them play, the, the two men in the picture there, Connor Cody, has gone in as a sweeper from a, a centre midfield role. Wore the captain's armband for the vast majority of the season, and Danny Bat's absence, um, he hasn't been he hasn't been picked on, on the vast majority. And Ruben Neves, in my opinion, has been the best player in the league. And for anyone that hasn't seen this fella play, yeah. I think he's phenomenal. I think he's phenomenal. He's just gone twenty one in the last couple of months. He has the ability to dictate the tempo of a game yeah. at twenty twenty one in a league that is high pressure, hundred miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, do you, do his, you spatial, like his spatial awareness as you say is fantastic when to, to give it one touch and when to take a touch mm. and get out of tight situations he drops into areas to receive the ball and then he just keeps it going at the tempo you want the game yeah. to play that the he recognition is, though of, mm-hmm. of the type of pass to yeah. play as well the, the variation of passes he has yeah. is phenomenal the two men that we just seen in the picture have got the long rake and diagonal yeah. Wolves wing backs Matt Doherty Douglas on the yeah. other side hold the width of the pitch they're always the out ball yeah. but Neves in the more advanced positions mm. we've seen him feed a phobia in recent mm. weeks I have a needle straight through the middle yeah. and his goals have been there's a stat right that I read the other day he's had more goals from outside the 18 yard box than touches inside, inside it it's unreal isn't it phenomenal <laughs> phenomenal and his goal the other night you see his goal against Derby unbelievable they have been the best team the championship I've ever yeah. seen. Now we, I hold the record. I, Reading, Reading hold yeah. the record. Well, they were after that record. There's no doubt points. about it. Is that they yeah. were after that record, but they yeah. dipped. The performance levels. I was delighted. Dipped. Yeah, I bet you were. <laughs> <laughs> I said to you, uh, Matt Doherty, right? Just calm yourself now, lad. <laughs> Draw a few games, even lose a few, because they were that far ahead at one yeah, stage. They could have. They could have fought. Brendan yeah. got a bit nervous actually, mm. but they've got themselves going again. Yeah. They're they're good with the ball. They're excellent with the ball. So, <clears throat> they're even more dangerous without the ball because on the counter attack Cavalero um, Helder Cavalero, Costa does pace everywhere yeah. and I think from looking at it and looking at Benny Cafobi and Benetti or the centre forward that was there as well Bonatini. they come in short and the wingers just fly they're inside in behind. and they're gone <clears throat> and they're, they know what's happening and even though I might not suit Benny Cafobi to a certain degree he's now beginning to find a way for them yeah. to, to drop he short. gives them another dimension of different dimension to the they've other. got the nucleus already to be top 10 yeah I was going to say mid table Premier yeah. League team with what they have and with a certain Mr Mendes the relationship they have with him I imagine <laughs> they'll, go on, they'll be yeah. a couple of favours maybe in terms of Neves Players. this year yeah. Neves wouldn't be at Wolves only for George Mendes I don't know if he'd be there next year they well, could probably have 30 million well they bought him for 15 yeah 
I, I would suggest these they would easily get double million. that. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Easily player, thirty million. Yeah, but he's been that good though. Yeah, he's been excellent. that good. The chase is on. To be fair, Fulham nipped yeah. into second ahead of Cardiff. Cardiff have been unbelievable. Yeah. Lost the last two. Maybe just starting to feel the pressure of it. Oh, it's perfect for Warnock now, though. They've he's reversed it already, and now we were the hunter. Now we're the hunters. Yeah, four or five games to go. Yeah, who do you fancy? Fulham. You know what? Like Fulham are twenty unbeaten. Yeah, beat. but you get into that spot, and then the pressure goes on you. Oh, all of a sudden, what do we do now? Yeah, we're there. We've been chasing this for mm. twenty games. Now what do we do? There's the I I really enjoy the playoff hunt as well because you look at the teams that are in it, the contrast of styles. Fulham just gone into second, yeah. probably the purest form of football in the league. Wolves aren't just football, and I think they've got a bit of steel as yeah. well, which yeah. I wasn't sure of at the start of the season, but yeah. they've certainly proved me yeah. wrong. Uh, Cardiff, direct, fairly one-dimensional, but very very efficient. Same bracket as Mick McCarthy, Warnock, yeah, all them lads. and Millwall who've just gone into sixth again, keeping them in the league is an achievement for Neil Harris and they've just found themselves six just gone ahead of Middlesbrough mm. whose budget is through the roof just mm -hmm. it's a staggering Millwall in the playoffs it just doesn't sound that. right does no, it no. doesn't uh, and I wouldn't fancy going there no. in a, in a playoff situation yeah. either because you will get abused yeah. the it's, highest order it's, it's a lively lively um, yeah. environment yeah big time alright I've got some quick fire questions for you Kai best speak, speaking of Mick McCarty best manager you played under Feel no pressure. Steve to say. Koppel. Steve Koppel. Oh, yeah. Mick's not going to be happy with you. Nah, but without Koppel, I'd be. What was he? What was his strength? Uh, man management. Just seeing situations and how to deal with them. He was a, he was more an observer than a ranting and raver. So he'd give you good information before you go play, and he always believed in me. So he signed me three times. I think it was in the end. So he signed three times. Palace, Brentford, and Reading. Yeah, I wasn't aware he, he kept me. In, he kept me in the games. Kept me in the in football for a tactically few years. good. Tactically, no, I wouldn't say he was tactically good. He liked four four two, and that would be Stick it. To that. Stick to that, and he you wouldn't got change your success. His way. Well, certainly, I remember he's at Reading. He yeah. was very very good at that. Yeah, well, he got a formation and a way of playing that got us two or three years successful. And then it changes yeah. everything as well. Um, the best coach oh, kills me to say it. Go on, Phil Brown. Was it? Yeah. Really? Yeah, just like Wait, go on. in terms of coaching and, and on the training ground, on the, training the detail ground, and the, the detail. Yeah, on a fr I always like Fridays because Friday should be information for for the Saturday or yeah. Thursday, Friday. And I thought he was always very good with his information on opposition, opposition and with yourself and what yeah. he wanted from you. That, Random, is that it? including the actual, not necessarily the manager, that including the coaches you've worked for, just in terms of. Yeah, assist, like for instance Terry Connor at Ipswich. Yeah, Paul Clement was very good when we had him at with Ireland for a was couple he? of games. He was very. He's got a good, good. reputation as a coach, and he come and on. I actually recommended him for the Ireland job before Martin. Yeah. But he was very good coaching, very good. The sessions were very good put on. Brendan Rodgers as well, another one I had for two weeks. But Brendan and Paul are in the same bracket at Reading. Where was? But where did you have Brendan Rodgers? Reading. Oh, Reading he comes to Reading, and then I was. I had, I had enough to certain degree I wanted there, to go like, yeah, so yeah. I went to Hull in the yeah. end but he was very good for the two weeks as well but they were in the same black and they had the same ideas type of yeah training. best player played with wait uh, I don't expect you to say me it's okay I'll say Duffers mm, I say Duffer as well yeah i say Duffers just because he's manner and the way he was off the pitch as well he was likeable so Duffers against Ronaldo Gotta say, it, I think probably I remember having an opportunity to, to to really let one in on him, and I didn't. And I regret well, it to this day. It's not like he you. turned into me, and I I should have clattered him like, but I didn't. But something gone. This is Ronaldo, better not. <laughs> Best fullback winger relationship you've had. So who was the fullback you enjoyed playing with most? Nicky Shorey, because not as much his defensive was clever, ability. He was clever, wasn't he? He was just clever with his, with the ball. Left foot, outside the left yeah. foot, outside the left. He's talented, wasn't he? He's a talented footballer. Yeah. But he made an England cap because I, de I defended well for him and I made Irish caps because he... So you're taking the, the credit for his England cap? Yeah. Me yeah. because he's slow as anything. <laughs> <laughs> but he'll probably take credit for my Irish cap because he kept playing me in and I wouldn't have been the most talented. I'd have been raw as coming on the scene at 23-24. He was quite cultured. Yeah. All right, last one. Um, goal versus Italy and Barry, Noel or Robbie? Oh, Really? Of course, I'm going to say no. Do you think? I don't know. 
that's the truth to this day. I look at it and go, looks like Noel's goal, looks like Robbie's goal at that angle, looks like Robbie's, looks like Noel's. No, Oops. what do you think? <laughs> what an intro. <laughs> How are you, buddy? I'm good, mate. You? Yeah, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Stephen wasn't aware you were coming on. Do you not know? What's going on with the sibling? Uh, yeah, phone calls, sorry, texts, no, he's sorry. not doing He looks old. You've aged badly in a, in a month. No, I wouldn't hey. have that. Have you seen the gruing on him? I know, I know, the shambles. <laughs> Come here, okay. how's life? You, you are flying, you play a coach at Wigan, you are on course to get promotion. It's been it's been a hell of a season, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been great. It's been a it's been a tight season, to be fair. It's been uh, so exciting in a way that, you know, we're all leapfrogging each other, there's games in hand, there's games not been played. Uh we go five points behind, we go five points up. It's been strange, like it's been really interesting, really exciting. To paint the picture for people, who, there's a bit of snobbery here in England, or in Ireland, I should say, no, right? They wouldn't pay too much attention to League One, whereas I do. I think your brother does, in fairness. You're a top level on points with Blackburn. You have six games left. Shrewsbury have probably been the surprise factor in terms of the division. They've just played in the in the uh, Czech Trade Trophy in f- final on Wembley on, on Sunday. They just haven't given up, have they? So it's been a three-way wow. tie for those two positions. They've, they've done so well. They've been great, but... When we played them back, I think it was in October, you, you know, you could see the way they were set up with the manager. Um, they were 4-1, 4-1, physically strong in every position, uh, like for like, um, a substitution. So they weren't going to ever change the way they played. And after that game, I thought, these, these won't go away. You know, these will be there at the end, because Royal Ninja you stay, stay good for them. Um, and it did, so fair play to them. So your manager, Paul Cook, who we obviously we know well from his time at, at Sligo, I would have played against his Chesterfield side, has a real kind of... I, I like the way he sets up the team. They they remind me of him as a player, funny enough. They had a bit of steel, but he gives his players the licence to go and play, and they play with a bit of a bit of style. And I think that's been the case with you all season. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's one of the things probably that attracted me to him, that he, you know, he wants to play football. Uh, he has his own set kind of unique style about how he plays in terms of uh, formation um, philosophy but you know it works for him so well and he's such a good man manager you know and with, with that with the shape and the, the rules he installs it's, it's, it's very very good you know it's a very very uh, I think it's a very very high win ratio you have you know one, probably the best in the league uh, yeah. probably the best in the UK to you be go, honest you go back to last year now you were, you were together at Portsmouth Pressure at Portsmouth again. There's there's a perception amongst Portsmouth fans, isn't there, that it's it's a huge club. And look, it is a, it is a big club, but in relative terms, I think they need to relax themselves a little bit. So you have to deal with that. Got you over the line. And again, people might have been surprised in terms of the move to Wigan, but with the financial power that he maybe has this year and the squad of players that he's got at his disposal, again, with that obviously comes a pressure. Absolutely, I think you know. Last year, I think the pressure. You, know, you, you you play against the likes of Newport at home, they bring maybe 100, 150 people. The stadium's full of 18,000. You know, it was absolutely immense. The place was rocking every week. And with that comes pressure, you know, especially if you've got young players and things aren't going the way they want them to go. You know, teams just come up and set up, you know, 5-5. You know, we played Carlisle the first game this season. It ended up being a 6-4. They took off a striker from, from 5-4-1 and went with a, a, a central defender, you know, and they just packed the box, they just cleared the ball and didn't move outside the 18-yard box. It was just ways of attack for 20, 25 minutes. And I was like, wow, we drew the game, one all. Um, the, the fans got, you know, a bit uneasy, but we stuck with it, you know, with the gaffer, we stuck with the mentality of how he wanted to play, you know, and we ended up winning the league on the last day of the season, you know, having been top of the league for 12 minutes. So... Mm-hmm. One of the highlights now this year, I'd say, I would imagine, certainly from the outside looking in, would have been the, the cup run that you've been on and keeping that going alongside. You had a couple of defeats league-wise in and around that Man City game, then you and everybody, as per usual, jumps on it. Oh, their eyes aren't on the league, but since then you've really cracked on. But in terms of that Man City performance, that must have been some night. Yeah, absolutely. It was there. Uh... It was outrageous, to be fair, with everything that went on. Like you said, there was a couple of results um, that we we not done as well as we should have done before the game. I think a lot of the boys, maybe you're right in a certain degree, you know, were, were more probably worried about the Man City game and the fact of the 
of the, the, the threat they carry with how, how many good players they have. So you, you might be right in saying that, Keith, but at the same time, the gaffle, you know, we had a couple of meetings before the game. He made it so simple. We went out, you know, it's probably the first, he admits it himself, it was the first time he ever changed the shape for the game um, in his career. It's due to the respect he had to give Man City, you know, and it worked. You know, we did. He made things so simple for our midfield three, um, and within that, around the shape, we, we knocked off the game to be fair. So, how are you managing to find, obviously, your ideas with coaching, and then you have Paul Cook's ideas? How do you find yourself being quiet? Have you learned the, the master how to be quiet in a, as a coach yet, or have you not learned your lesson from the FBI and the Robbie Keane's goal? <laughs> I'm just, to be honest, it's a good show. I, I, I'm just learning. That's that's the big thing for me at the moment. I'm, I was trying to explain to some of the guys the other day, but from going from playing to coaching, it's like being a, a Formula One driver and then becoming a mechanic. It's so it's so different. It, it, it's all a part of the same game, but it's such different roles. So for me right now, I'm just learning the game. I'm just learning what he's doing. You know, I've got notes. I'm sitting here and I'm in the office of, of the training ground. We're off today, but. I'm, I'm getting notes, I'm taking them stuff that I've missed through the week. Uh, I'm coaching in a couple of hours for, for four or five hours. So it's just trying to put it all together. There's no right and wrong. It's just trying to find what works for you and what works for, obviously, for this manager here, it works well. It's amazing when you when you come out of the game and from a player, you're so headstrong, so you have your opinions mm. and you're not afraid to voice them. But when you come out of it, you have to really take a step back and be politically correct in the way you go about things and, and how you approach it. It's it's very different and it's something you have to, to be very good at from, from the start because if you don't, you'll soon get around or you can't be trusted or you can't. So from that point of view, you have to be very loyal to your coaches. I'd imagine Paul Cook, we know, he plays 4-2-3-1. You have to be 100% committed to that formation as a coach. Yeah, I, I was in a similar position to you, Noel, actually, in terms of towards the end of playing, became a player coach. I, I really struggled with the player coach role because I felt I couldn't fully commit to both so in the end I had to make the decision I was really enjoying the coaching I was at MK Dons playing the exact same system that you play 4-2-3-1 manager gave me a lot of license a lot of he really trusted me to crack on so it was a great learning curve but in terms of what Stephen's saying it's 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 difficult isn't it coming away from that and how how have you found being that player coach have you found it difficult not to a certain degree, because I'll, I'll probably simplify it down that with the force team, I'm a player. Uh, I try managing the dressing room, like as in terms of the day-to-day stuff. Uh, a few, you know, a few months ago, we got beat before Christmas, and obviously we came in on the Sunday. The boys are down. I thought, right, we've been beating the first time in probably two, two and a half months. We can't. We got a game on Tuesday. You can't let it affect you. So. I ended up just bringing. We've got a massive dressing room here, great facility that we're in. Uh, I ended up just bringing in a football. Getting a game of two touch going between the squads, and since that day, you know everybody's in, the, in, in instead of being in hanging around the the, uh, the treatment room as you as you know yourself, you know some boys will go in and have hang around there because there's conversations going. Everyone's in the, the dressing room now playing two touch, different rules, and it's kind of become a competition every day, you know. So them kind of things, the gaffer understands that I've got on top of. But in terms of outside that, I just got I go away with the 18s. They've been so good. Uh, I'm with the 14s. I shadow on them, watching what they do, getting involved, uh, and it's been it's been great to see both sides of it. You know, because for under 14s, I'm I have honestly, God, guys, it's it's like I've, it's like Krypton Factor. I don't have a to do, <laughs> and honestly, God. But when I go to the 18s, and even if I get the 23, sometimes and that it's 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 second nature because it's just you're dealing with different kind of aspects mm. of the game, winning instead of the more you know progression probably development side of the game if that makes sense so in that sense I've kept one separate to the other and, and it's worked quite well and is this where your passion lies now obviously you're 35 now myself and Stephen have retired always had, a, had an eye on coaching I sampled it is this where you kind of see yourself going and do you have a real passion for it have you, have you, have you loved that side of it or do you still want to play on for the next year or two it's, to be fair I was just talking to Stephen about it this morning that that's the thing. It, it depends on what opportunity comes up, you know. Uh, I'm go- obviously, I've been with this manager now for two years, and I, I've got to be. To- I'm totally loyal to him. So, to the day he tells me, "Look, um, thanks, but I don't need you anymore," or "Look, thanks, there's, there's a job here for you," I can't. I won't do anything if that makes sense. So, 
for me, Stephen, you've got to be so loyal and so, you know, dedicated to the manager. If you're that, that player that he goes to to manage things on and off the field in certain ways, you know, for me, until he tells me something else. But right, you're right, I do have a bug for it. I have it for the last two or three years. Stephen will tell you, I've, I've went to America, I've, I've had camps in America, my own camps off my own back. Um, just to learn different sides of the game and that, and it is a passion of mine. I do want to go coaching and manage one day. Um, when that comes or how it comes, who knows? Listen, the last question I want to ask you, which was the first question I really want to ask you today: When it kicked off in that tunnel against Man City, where were you? <laughs> I was actually talking to De Bruyne for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it until I came in. I was like, oh, to be fair, our, our boys are good as gold. You know we. They, they, they've got a really strong dressing room and, you know, what could you say to somebody at Man City you know, <laughs> to, to up Royal and what, could, what, what, what can you say to them? The boys are on 250 plus grand a week. Well, would know, probably cash them off, wouldn't he? That's exactly what I was going to say. We walked in and it was just like, it all kicked off and everyone was shouting and, and, and Griggy walks back and goes, yous are all skinned anyway. And we just, just continued, just continued walking down the tunnel. That's what, oh my God. So that was that was. I just started chuckling and walked in. Like, but it was more. I think it was more after the pen, after the, the red card. Um, I think Aguero felt that his one uh, two minutes before that was it was a red card when it was a tackle by knife. It was no more than a yellow to be honest. But we got away with it. Um, and it, you know, it, it was what it was. I think. I think it started off with the keeper that wasn't playing pushed their gaffer. That's what kicked it all off. That never got mentioned. He gave him a little push. You know. <laughs> so, uh, and then it was. Uh, to be fair, be careful Pep what you're saying. Was, was, yeah, he was. You no, know, he was shouting for us to go to our go to our dressing room. You know, which I found a bit disrespectful because I wouldn't walk into somebody's house and tell you to go to your bedroom. You know, it, it just yeah. So I just carried on walking and didn't get involved. But we came in. And I think the boys knew then. We had them rattled. Now when we when we came in at half time, there was there was a, there was a, a bit of difference about us. There was more confidence in the room because we have these rattled. You know, we, we can go on and do something here. So. From that, I think it kicked off. It all kicked off for us. Listen, we're going to let you go. I really appreciate you taking the time. I sincerely wish you all the best. Hope you get over the line. I have no doubt you will. And uh, we might catch up to you again soon. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Noel. They've had a superb season, haven't they? Yeah. Wigan, in terms of Paul Cook, the way he plays, style in which he plays. Combine that with the FA Cup run, that gives them a little bit more kind of profile, I presume. Yeah. Um, but he seems to be enjoying his, his coaching. You've mentioned it before, actually, about those camps that he does. Yeah. And, uh, he, he's clearly, clearly yeah, he's, focused on he, it. Yeah, he is focused on it. Uh, he enjoys doing coaching. He did the camps a couple of years ago in America, and, and it was a, a success. He was on about maybe doing a couple this year as well. So, listen, he has his little pathway set out. I can't hold his hand, even if I am his older brother. He's got to go about it his way and, and do it. Listen, he's. Mm. He's almost like an insider for me as well. When he's at games, he was they played Rochdale on Tuesday. Oh, how was Ryan when he come on or whatever? Yeah, very good or whatever. So it's good. We were, like I remember we were joking at the top about the goal between him and Robbie, but it must yeah. have been special playing with him for Ireland and for your family. Yeah, like no, maybe only has three or four caps, and yeah. probably three of them would have been, or most of them would have been on me on the pitch yeah. at the same time or whatever. So it, it the Poland one was nice, the Barry one was spectacular in terms of how we played in the night, the drama of it all, and. And yes, I, I I do feel from in terms of the goal. I understand. So do I. Uh, I understand the whole situation around it. He was keen to express his feelings after the game and say it was my goal, which to this day you can understand why he was saying it. But politically, it, maybe he could have kept his head down and been a bit more clever with the whole situation. Did he get a cap after that? No. That was his last cap, wasn't it? Yeah. Barry? So that's. That's, that's quite sad, actually. Isn't yeah, it? and I think Noel maybe has a little few bits and conversations with certain people that wouldn't have been pleasant regarding it. Uh, not Robbie, may I say, not Robbie at all. Robbie was totally out of it in terms of that. But it is what it is. I think could have been managed better from the other side too. Of course it is, but that's everything's in hindsight, and it is what it is. Yeah, well, let's genuinely wish them good luck for the rest of the season. Right, we move on to. I presume you watched the Masters. Yep. Who were your tips again? You said Tiger. Tiger and Tiger. I wouldn't. I was actually a bit blunt, wasn't tiger, I? Tiger, Tiger, and Tiger. Yeah, and then Rory, not Rory. He said Tiger, Rory, and then I said Tiger or Rory. Yeah, you said I said rather. Tiger. I yeah. would have rather Rory. I was. I'm not as yeah. Big a tiger I think fan Rory's was. was all set up, and t- for the last day as well, I think Rory took a positive. What's your take on him on the Sunday? <laughs> it doesn't happen some days. It's golf. I think that's it. Yes, it just that didn't happen. Just didn't happen for him. He's one of the only players to not shoot on the par though. 
Yes, and if anything, if okay, say if you're on the bag that day, and you look at Roy the last five or six holes, your demeanour wasn't great. So then it then it comes down to your caddy to to try and to shake it up. up. Maybe can your friends do that? We can only relate to it to our sport. Yeah. If things are going wrong, if you're getting beat three 0 you should still have the same presence. Yeah, but if I all right, bring it down to our level then. If I see you down, your demeanour is down, mm-hmm. and you're playing on the left wing, and I'm centre midfield. I'm trying to identify that as long as my game is okay or, or because I was quite vocal anyway I might give you a rocket yeah, yeah. or I might give you a, look relax bro, whatever it is yeah. some kind of yeah. interaction whereas does his caddy because he's his mate have that in his locker you'd like to think they have their, their friendship will suffer a million percent there's no doubt about it because they're going to get in situations as long as it, even the further it goes on that'll be tense mm. so they're going to have that between the two of them. Now, maybe he can say, listen, Rory, come on, get your head up, go again. Mm. That, I don't I think he can do that, of course. Like, you caddy for me in the Europe Pro Tour or something along them lines. Pro-ams. Pro-ams, like, you could actually... And if there's a nice one happening at Adair Manor next week, trying, Pro-am, to, is it? trying to do the show from there, but we haven't have quite you, had the invites. Failed, yeah, yeah. Not, no invites yet. Uh, well, I've started looking after a golfer. Have you? Yeah. You want to name it? Luke Donnelly. He's on the Europe Pro Tour. He's out in Mount Julius. Um, I'll never tell him how to play golf. I'll tell him what he should be doing off the course and mm. what he can do to improve and try and improve his mentality. And, and more so than that, I mean, his manager, his organisation. So he has to be organised and prepared for the next... He's got a busy schedule coming up. Like I was, We were going through it yesterday. He's got a real busy schedule, a lot of events, when not to play, when to play. And that's going to be up to himself as well. That's that's a huge component of looking after players, and isn't it? In mm. terms of the the wisdom, the knowledge that we would have after being through yep. that career path. I was chatting to someone the other day about a certain player who obviously won't mention, but if you go from hypothetically you're on a couple of grand a week and you get offered three grand a week, mm. but the the move is wrong for that player. Yeah. young player because he's going to go to an environment where it won't suit his style yeah. yes he'll earn more money in the short term but in the long term for his development it's not going to suit him yeah. but if you can go somewhere even if they're paying the same wage but you can shine in that environment yeah. and then potentially earn 10, 20 and we know the finances on offer in, in this day and age if you yeah. do make those steps up well it's you can easily go to a club like the club the boy's going from Cork to Preston and the Dundalk boys they're at a crossroads some of them now already mm. six months down the line do they stay there and pick up the handy wages or do they, do they go and play somewhere less and try and get some games under the belt a bit like O'Connor the left back of course didn't go play at Preston but went to Fleetwood got injured on, unfortunately Andy Boyle's gone to Doncaster but they're going to go play games yeah now if they do well enough there they'll go back up to their wages and they'll get their money in the championship or Premier League whatever it takes them I'd be keen to say, right, listen, drop down the league, play some right. games. But of course you don't want to lose money, but sometimes you've got to take a sacrifice mm-hmm. to, to get somewhere and you make it up from the other side of the club to pay, make sure he gets the same wages or whatever. And you've got someone like Sean Maguire who's got his 10 championship goals yes. this season during the night, haven't missed, was it, was it two, Last, three two months? three months of it, yeah. And a oh, real bad injury as well, a very, hamstring. Very yeah. bad, yeah. very bad. Hamstring nearly off the bone, so come back in that way. Yeah, But he, you could tell, even when he's injured, if you look at his social media and bits and pieces, he ain't missing. He's in the gym working hard. There's no coincidence. He's come back. And I he said the Turkish game as the as the incentive, didn't he, to get yeah, back in, to get, get back, back in. fit. He came back literally about ten days before a scored. Timing impeccable. Yeah. Comes in. Or he took his top off. Yeah. Which is a pure sign. I've been in the gym. I'm all tough. Like I'm ready to go. Like, but when you're in that bubble as a player, do you rate him? Yeah, I like his attitude. I think he's he's eager beaver. I think he 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 thrives on mistakes. Because mm. I actually talked to the lead centre half before he played and at the week on Tuesday night I said Shawnee will compete with you in the air but he's not interested in competing and winning it he's interested in getting the next ball so you've got to be aware of that like, so mm. I'm giving an Irish guy an Irish insight to another player he already knew that anyway to a certain degree so uh, he's a good player and he, he tries on defenders mistakes he's got to he's got to be given an opportunity I know he did in the last game uh, himself and, and Hogan up front they, it what very hard to judge him on that. Well, both of them the biggest. Players. No, so they don't suit really no. in terms of playing. If you play with those two up front, you have to play in a particular way. That's why we went with the three at the back. But mm-hmm. 
the service up to them wasn't wasn't no. great. We, I'd we, like us to stick it straight back for. I like it. Yeah, yeah, we spoke about that before yeah. that game in terms of the personnel available to them with the squad. Yeah. Declan Rice, obviously. Yeah. Long, whoever it is, Shane Duffy, Kieran Clark. Yeah. We've got Pearson. We've got natural wing backs, haven't we? In terms yeah. of Seamus, Doherty. Yeah. Stephen Ward, Stephen Ward yeah. whoever it is, and the Stevens at the left wing back. He's had a very good that, season. Yeah, who's playing he? that role? He's, t- he's played pretty much every game for yeah. for Sheffield United. An attacking left wing back yeah. role. He's Can done fit into it. He's done very well. The, the problem on that night, I felt, was the was the centre midfield area in terms of Alan Brown playing as a holder, mm-hmm. where he's been playing as a box, box to box. He, got, he scored a goal exactly. the night. Flying, yeah. flying. He's really developed well. Right, I want to move on before we go. Bit of Premier League biggest game of the weekend probably Spurs against Manchester City City need to react look the, the Premier League is is done mm. but in terms of them Spurs look like top four is probably probably confirmed but in terms of City mm. how do you sum up their season how can it be an anti-climax yeah they're if, gonna win the Premier League yeah I heard them trying to pick these players up after the game already oh we got four or five games maybe one of the players actually we got to try and finish the Premier League strong mm. Most of them are on. Are already thinking about the holidays before they go to the World Cup. They're all pretty much three quarter squad will probably in the, yeah, in the, the World, World Cup. Cup yeah. So they probably will f- just about get over the line. It won't be as dynamic as it was mm. during the year. But you never know. Spurs can. Spurs are a good team. A little bit. Harry Kane's goal was a bit dubious to me. With England going to the World Cup and them rewarding the goal to it. Well, I was going to ask. Noel about it in terms of whose goal was a well, slash. Kevin Doyle is the guy to ask for that because he scored one. Pretty similar to that when he's trying to flick it on with his head from a Nicky Shorey and he put his hand up like Shearer and ran away. Like, Did he so get it? He got it. Did he? Yeah, I got one at Leeds before where no one near me. It was back, <laughs> it was back in the day where, where that was there was an only one goal, camera. That was an Ericsson goal. Ericsson goal has Definitely. to be. Definitely. You see Mo Salah's tweet when they awarded the goal. Whoa, really? <laughs> I, I'm, with, I'm with you. I'm with you, Mo. I can feel your pain. Um, Look, I, th- I think it's a little bit sad in terms of City because of the level of their performance for the vast majority of the season has been so good, so entertaining. But as ever, when you get to this stage of the season, they went down with the FA Cup, as, as we mentioned, to Wigan. They win the Carabao Cup. The, the Champions League is just so fierce. We've spoke about what teams have done this week. Juventus with that n- near comeback. Roma. Ro- everybody wanted Roma. Everybody wanted Roma. Yeah. Next was probably Sevilla. Look what can happen. So there's no guarantees, regardless of how much money you spend. Yeah. Tactic thinking, and you ask questions about the fact they've lost 5 1 over two legs. Yes, but I do think with Liverpool, over a whole campaign, they haven't got the strength and depth. In terms of one off games, or in this case, two, yeah. they can. The knockout. Yeah, they can yeah. do it. They've proved it. So I have got, I've got a little bit of sympathy for Guardiola because they've been magnificent. Yeah, yeah. They, they'll. They've been the best Premier League team to adapt to style and win the Premier League with. Like the years gone by, you've a certain styles. Mourinho, grinding it out, even grinding yeah. Alex Ferguson teams were yeah. are attacking for years and years. Everyone wanted to be like that team, mm. so everyone went four four two. Then Mourinho come along, but now this team has really ad- mm. adapted into a real dynamic team. He's changed Silva from a winger, De Bruyne from a winger into a two. Sentiment field players in the Esther, Xavi like to a certain degree and they've looked they've really done it well. So and they've been really pleasing on the eye and without the ball as well. So and I I, I feel for Stern a little bit because he's got over twenty goals. They should be talking how good he is, but he's typical. Everyone's looking at the chances he missed mm. and he's not a natural goal goal scorer, he's not, but he's been getting in the right area mm. every time and he's got his rewards. We've had a couple of um tweets in Are they really brothers? Their accents are very different, yours and Noel. Don't know what they mean by that, Stephen. Another yeah. one here. You're looking great as Eric Cantona's body double. I'm a lot slimmer than Eric, thanks very much. <laughs> I, I don't mind the beard. I can deal with that, but the belly, like, I don't think I need that right now. Like, <laughs> I, was like, I, have, I hurt me back playing tennis, so I am putting on two or three pounds, but I ain't that uh, bad yet. You and me both. You yes. and me both. Right, listen, that's all we've got time for this week. Really appreciate you coming in. Thank, Thank, you. Skate. Thank you. Next week, I'm going to be at Burnley, uh, behind the scenes, talking to Sean Dyche, all the Irish lads, so make sure you tune in for that. That's next week from 12.30... Till then, we shall see you then.